Hello, sports fan. This is Stephen Hill for Sports Choice Plus. I'm bringing you the NFC playoff seating as I see them for next year, for this coming year, for the NFL season. Before I get right into that, I want to make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe right now so every single time I make content, you can get it first. Without further ado, we're going to jump right into the action. With so many different moving parts in the NFC, so many different new faces that we already know that our great players are now switching from AFC to the NFC. It's going to be a tight, tight season next season. So the NFL odds that I got coming up, it's going to be based off the information I've looked at, their scheduling, their breakdowns, their bye weeks, all these things. So, and keep in mind, it's going to be a totally different season that we've ever seen because your training camps are probably going to be a whole virtual thing. Um, you're looking at just the off season. You don't get the same training as you get. So, these are my playoff predictions for the NFC. Um, coming in at the top wild card spot, it's going to be Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I have them leveling out at 11 and 5. I think that they're going to have a pretty good season, but you got to ask yourselves do you trust a brand new Bucs team? I'm not talking specifically about Brady or Gronk, but a whole team that's never been there and done this before, like this on this consistent level. Um, with these current players and Bruce Arian, have, are you going to trust them to get the job done and be the top dog all season? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say they're going to lose a couple of games. I think they can lose both games to the Saints because the Saints are a powerhouse on offense. Not only do they have Michael Thomas on offense, but they just added Emmanuel Sanders. If those guys can stay healthy, it's going to be a hell of an offensive football season for Drew Brees and company. Um, so I think that with the weapons that they have, they're going to set themselves up for a pretty good wild card spot. And I believe in Brady is going to guide them. And then the playoffs, they're going to have to let loose and let all those weapons go and fly high and let it all rip on Gronk's shoulders, on Mike Evans' shoulders, Godwin's shoulders. It's just so many weapons that they have. They need to cash in and win big and win early to try to get home field advantage. But I think that 11 to 5 suits them very well. Coming in number two. On the wild card spot, I do have the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, they're going to be a close number two and then close number two in their own division. When you look at the wild card spot and what they can do for this NFC West, the 49ers are the king of division right now. You cannot count out the Rams. You cannot count out the Cardinals because now they have stuff to throw to. Kyler Murray has stuff to throw to in the desert with D-Hop and Larry Fitzgerald. Um, but the Seattle Seahawks, when you're looking at Russell Wilson and what he can do, he delivers year after year, no matter if he has an offensive line or not, no matter if he has a defense or not. He continuously saves the day for the Seahawks and gives them that much needed firepower behind the quarterback position and delivers with his legs, delivers with his arm. He extends plays. And I think that with Bobby Wagner on the linebacker position, you look at the trade where they got president Jamal Adams, that should help shore up the back end of that defense slightly. I think that that's worth one game's win. Adding president to that defense that they already got out there. I think that with the playmakers that they have on defense, that can help win you another game as well. So I'm putting Seattle at 10-6. and six. I think they're going to lose a couple of tough games, but they're going to definitely make the playoffs, I believe. I think they'll beat at the Green Bay Packers for a wild card spot when it's all said and done and block them from making the playoffs as far as their win-loss record goes. Coming in at the last wild card spot, I think Kyler Murray and the Arizona kids, I'm calling it here first, are going to steal one of the wild card spots. I think that they're going to be 10 and 6 as well. They're going to be uh, rubbling and doubling and bubbling. And, you know, they're going to be pass happy in the desert. You look at with them having the proper pieces on offense, it's now or never for Larry Fitzgerald. I think he's going to ball out. I think he may have a 1,000-yard season. With him having some type of support, D-Hop is going to catch everything that comes his way from Kyler. Uh, and and you just looking at what can happen on the other side. Laird's going to be a great number two receiver. And he's going to provide the firepower you need to be a second wide out. And that defense, if, uh, you know, Chandler Jones, Patrick Peterson, those guys can come into form and just give the uh, defense some type of pass rush, some type of good cornerback play for Patrick Peterson. They're going to be very competitive, and I think that they can be just competitive enough to win 10 games. I think this is the perfect mix for a young offense to get the fast start on the defense and they not catch up until late in the season, but their wins will be compiled by then. I think they can literally be the, the dark horse of the NFL, and they can make a lot of teams surprised. 
getting David Johnson off those books was a good thing that they did. And I think that they're going to be a better passing team because of it, because all he did was suck up a lot of salary at this point because he stays injured so much on the field. So uh, that's where I see that. Um, and coming in with your division winners for the NFC East, I think my Philadelphia Eagles are going to win. And they're going to be 10 and 6. Uh, I don't see enough roster moves on this team for us to really say that we're going to be competitive from a standpoint of a Super Bowl title run. You never can count out a team for a Super Bowl, but I'm just being realistic. Carson Wentz, until he actually does something in the playoffs and not just make the playoffs, has a lot to prove. You look at Dak Prescott and him getting the uh, uh, franchise tag and you look at uh, what they're doing in New York and Washington with their rebuild. Um, I just think that it's the perfect storm for the Philadelphia Eagles to steal another playoff spot from Dallas. And I don't think when Dallas has the pressure on them, they can actually play good football. But when they don't have expectations, they can make the playoffs. So I just think with the expectations in Dallas and them signing all these big ticket guys on defense that used to be great, I think they're going to fail again. My Eagles steal the playoff spot at 10 and 6 to win the NFC East. Coming in uh, to win the NFC North, I think the Minnesota Vikings are going to come in there and they're going to win the NFC North at 11 and 5. I think that they're going to scale off and beat off the Packers. I think that Aaron Rodgers is just He's up and down. He gets hurt a lot. So I'm not counting on Aaron Rodgers to win a lot of games for the Packers this year. I think that with COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic going on, I don't think he's going to come in. And you got to think, his his clock is ticking with this coaching staff. They didn't draft this guy. They didn't bring this guy in. They've got their own guy that they got on the bench that they just drafted. And you got to think, it's Aaron Rodgers on his way out in Green Bay. Not saying he's done as far as in the NFL or he's lost anything. But his time's ticking as far as in Green Bay. I think they want some fresh blood in there, and they will see that soon. Um, I just don't see the Packers having a consistent season without injuries. I'm just waiting for Aaron Rodgers to break his collarbone right now. So, you know, it's three games in, four games in, they're doing good. And all of a sudden, boom, he gets some type of calf injury or some type of collarbone or clavicle injury. So that's kind of the thing that I think is going to follow the same trend going into next year. Coming in at the number two spot, I have the Saints tying for the 11 to five spot. I think the Saints are gonna be very competitive, but when you look at it, they're gonna have, um, they're gonna beat the tiebreaker with the Buccaneers to put them in 11 to five. And that's how I think they're gonna be the second seed in the NFC. If they're playing at that dome in New Orleans, I think it's hard to stop them. So many people come down there with good teams and they go home with a loss because this team can actually score from different parts of the field. I know you've got uh, Michael Thomas, you got Alvin Kamara, they added Emmanuel Sanders. Drew Brees is gonna open up this field like nobody's business. He's gonna to have to have a weapons race with Tampa to keep that flow as far as the lead over them in the standings of the win column. I think they're gonna force a lot of offense. They're gonna put up a lot of points. And I'm excited to see what the Saints are actually gonna do. And I think that they're gonna go 11 and five and that's gonna be a heck of a, a season for Sean Payton and company, considering no training camp, considering, considering so many things that uh, their team's been together for so many years. They know the offensive playbook. Drew Brees knows it in his sleep. Michael Thomas knows it in his sleep. Kamara knows it in his sleep. And that defense for the Saints is underrated. When you look at just what they can do um, from uh, Latimer on one side of the ball, and I think he's very underrated. Them getting uh, Jenkins back. Uh, it's so many different things that this team has going for them at this moment. I know that they had some issues earlier in the offseason with, with Drew Brees. That's going to bring this team together, I believe. And they're going to have a, a really a good chance to win a Super Bowl this season and possibly send Drew Brees off into the sunset with another Super Bowl. So that's why I have the Saints going 11-5. and five. And I think that coming in as your NFC top seed, it's just one of those things. I've got the 49ers going 13-3. and three. I think the Niners will cough up a couple of games, but they'll guide themselves just enough to get back into that Super Bowl hunt. And I think that when you're looking at this defense, they reloaded on defense. Yes, they got rid of uh, a couple of pieces, but they also reloaded. And when you look at them being able to let Staley go and retire and get Trent Williams right behind it, 
You look at Shanahan, his familiarity with uh, Williams and him being able to put the pedal to the metal and motivate him to get it done. Kyle Shanahan is saying, look, guy, I believe in you. Come on, be the left tackle, be the all-star. We know you can be and protect our quarterback and Jimmy G. And you never know what could happen. I'm just overall excited for what the 49ers can do. I'm overall excited for what Nick Bosa year two can do. You never know. So I'm definitely excited for this team. The 49ers have the leg up on a lot of teams. You look at Kittle being possibly the best tight end in the NFL. You look at Debo as a wide receiver, just developing and becoming better. Um, just route running better, catching the ball better, being a better blocker, even the better blocker than he already is. So I think Shanahan's going to learn from his mistakes in the Super Bowl. They're going to dial up more plays more often. And I think this year you're going to see Jimmy G step into being a better leader and a better quarterback. And we start and, and I think start to be mentioned in more of the top quarterback conversations, because I think this is going to be a career year for Jimmy G and the San Francisco 49ers. So just a quick recap. I've got uh, 13 and 3 for the Niners, 11 and 5 for the Saints, 11 and 5 for the Vikings, 10 and 6 for my Eagles, uh, 11 and 5 for the Bucks in the NFC Wild Card. Um, I also got 10 and 6 for the Seahawks and 10 and 6 for the Cardinals as a surprise dark horse pick. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. What's your team? What's your team's record? You think it's going to be in 2021? And always, don't forget, subscribe and share our videos. Thank you so very much, and I'm excited for NFL season so we can just start debating some of these games. Have a great one, and stay safe, everybody.